Hey guys, welcome back to the new series. This is called A Passion for Prayer and we're going to be looking today at A Pleasing Faith. I'm super soaked about this new series. I hope you were able to catch my last series, The Intercessor's Guide. Um, I think there's 14 videos on there if you haven't seen that. And also if you haven't hit subscribe, hit subscribe so you can be updated for the upcoming videos. I know some of the new series we're going to be doing with my husband and some we're going to be doing apart from him. Um, but he's also going to be using his uh, talents and gifts that God has blessed him with as far as technology goes to enhance and promote this series and um, my dream. And his dream is well about um, stirring up a passion for intimacy with the Father. And so once again today we're talking about a pleasing faith. And when I first asked the Father, I was like, okay Lord, a pleasing faith. What does a pleasing faith look like? And he said, a faith that does not waver. And so that was where I kind of took that and ran with. I was like, okay, let me search this out. What do you mean by this? And one of the most important scriptures he brought me to was Hebrews 11:6. And so we're going to look at that. And it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. He who comes to him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so when I look at a scripture, I like to take it into pieces so that I can digest it easily in a sense. And so the first part of that is it says, without faith, faith, it is impossible to please God. And so I would imagine um, some of us are pleasers out there. I'm a natural born pleaser. I love to please. I aim to please. I don't like people to be disappointed at, at me or uh, with me or, um, you know, have hurt feelings towards me or any of those things. I, I'm a peacemaker and I love to please. And so I take that into my prayer time. I take that into all my relationships and especially my important relationships. And God's super important to me. And so I honor him as king and I want to please him. And so we can be sure that when we have faith, we're pleasing him because without faith, it's impossible to please him. So we know that the opposite is true. So if you're already entering into your prayer time with faith, you can be sure that God's showing up and he is pleased. Okay. And so the second part in that is that we must believe that he is. And of course that stems from our faith that we just talked about. Right? So we must believe that he is. And I say that, and we would think that most Christians would believe that, but there are a lot of Christians still, and especially baby Christians that might be trying to hope and believe that he's real but but not really convinced within their within themselves that he is and so this is where the wavering faith comes in and he's saying you can't be like that. You can't think, well, maybe he is here with me hearing my prayers and well, maybe he's not. And that's called wavering faith. And so a pleasing faith to him is a faith that does not waver. So we're going in with faith because we want to please him. We're, we're having that pleasing characteristic coming into our prayer time. And the second thing it says in here that it notes, it says, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So not only should we go in and believe that we're talking to God and he's hearing us, but that he He's also good and he's also a rewarder. And so we don't, there was a, uh, there's a parable that I wrestled with for years and that I think it's in Matthew 24, or Matthew 25. And so I had noted here that saying a pleasing faith is not like the wicked and la lazy servant in that parable of the talents. And in this parable, there's, there's three people that were given gifts. One, one was given five talents, one was given three talents and one was given one talent. And when the owner came back, the guy that had, had, had made this investment in these people, the guy guy with the five said, Hey, look, I took what you gave me and I doubled it. And, and the, the Lord says to him, well done, good and faithful servant. The second one who had the three gifts or three talents says, look, I, I took what you gave me and I doubled it. Here it is. And the Lord says to him, well done, good and faithful servant. Well, then there's the third guy who only had one uh, talent. And, and he says, and, and the Lord returns and he says, what have you done with what I gave you? And he says, well, I knew that you were a hard man. And so I went and buried it. And so the Lord, there's more to that, but in, in other words, because I don't remember the exact wording that this young man used, but he says he was accusing God of not being good, of not being a rewarder, of not being a man of his word. And so the, the Lord turns to him and he says, your own words have judged you and get away from me, you wicked and lazy servant. And so 
when it, when he pointed out the the wicked and the lazy part, wicked meaning, hey, this guy didn't want to believe. He didn't he didn't want to do anything, and that was the laziness. That was the laziness that God had pointed out. Sometimes when we're going in, we're praying. It's not easy. It's work. It's sowing. It's it's cultivating. It's it's hard work. We're we're trying to push everything our flesh is saying aside when it wants to f be fearful it wants to doubt and all those things and that's not always easy sometimes it's it it is sometimes it's easier than other times but most of the time it's not especially if you're passing through a trial you're passing through some some really deep waters it's not always easy and so when you go in there and you're, you're pushing that aside and you're saying no I will make the sacrifice I will I will do the suffering and I will push through in faith because it's hard it can be hard to to walk by faith and not by sight when things are falling apart all around you and you're saying no I won't I won't look to the left or to the right I will look straight ahead I will um, call those things that aren't as though they are you know um, the Bible also talks about faith being the substance of uh, of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen and so with our eyes our flesh our flesh naturally just wants to see evidence of it and, and we have to believe that first with our spirit I love there's a verse um, it talks about binding and loosing that we sometimes use in in the context of spiritual warfare and but it says whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and so it's not it's not the other way around and so we can do the fir the work first here on on earth and believe and call it as it is and and when I say that I don't, I don't want that to turn into um, a, a name it and claim it approach because that's not who I am that's not the um, the foundation for uh, uh, my beliefs or my ministry or any of those things you will always hear me um, uh, wrap that back around into God's will we should always pray God's will for things um, and, and with that I'm gonna I'm gonna piggyback off of our verse that says we must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder who diligently seek him I don't know how many times I've heard people say well you know I, I want this or that and well you prayed for it well, I know that God exists, but I don't know how much He cares about a little thing like this, and I don't, I don't believe that. Like, I feel that God does care for every intricate detail of our life. In fact, I've seen it come to pass many times. Um, you know, th this one time, um, I a lady had hit my door with her door, and there was a dent in my car door and some paint. You know, and I went into my closet, my prayer closet, that is, and I said, Lord, I know it's a small thing. But if you could just help me get that paint off there, and he said, use a magic eraser. And so I went out to my car, and sure enough, got a magic eraser, wiped it right off. And so I think he does honor those little prayers. In fact, I think he's honored because the amount of faith that goes out through that, where I'm saying, look, Lord, I know this is a small thing. You know, that takes a lot of faith that, that you know, if we're, if we're thinking, well, God is up here and he only answers things that are up here on this level and we we say hey I'm bringing this too do you think you can have some mercy that shows and extends a lot of faith and so he does care for every intricate detail of our life I mean the Bible says that if that he knows every hair on her head and I just come to this place of realizing that I'm one person out of like eight billion I think we're almost at and um, and then there's animals and he knows every hair on my head and the Bible says that that he knows when a sparrow falls to the ground and, and then he that he clothes the lilies I mean you know he brings food for ants and and and, and birds you know of the air so if he could know if he could know all those details I think that knowing the intricate desires of my life is nothing for him that it, it's something he's known for a long time that it's that it's no surprise to him and he's probably already got it lined up anyway he's just waiting for us to ask right and and that that reminds me of another scripture um you know it talks about how us as humans that that when we uh when we have kids and our kids come to us and they ask us for something good we don't give them i think it's a fish or a stone or a scorpion or something they use as an example in the parable he's saying no you give you give them what they ask for but how much more will your heavenly father do for those who ask and so he's saying you know i, I think one of the mistakes that we make as christians i know i was guilty of it and i just recently come to this knowledge of 
of, of and repentance of saying, God, I am so sorry for putting you in a box because we think, well, we're here. And so God must be here, but that's not the case. It's, it's, we're here and there's just no measurement of how far above he is, how, how much greater his ways are than ours, how much, how much more, um, like that verse says, you know, my thoughts are not your thoughts and they're far above yours, you know, and so we're here and there's just no measurement. And so just like Jesus says in that, in that parable that I was just talking about, he says, how much more will your heavenly father do for you to those who ask? And he's just waiting for us to ask. And then he brought up the, of course, when he went up to, um, to teach me about the wavering, we can look at the one verse in the Bible that, that comes to my mind right away, and it's from James, and he says, you have not because you ask not. Well, and some people are like, but I did ask, and I, I still don't have it. And then he says, he goes on to say, and you ask, but you ask amiss, meaning you're asking because you you want to use this for your own glory. You want to use this for your own benefit, or you want to use it and abuse it, okay? And so let's just point out two small things and I'll close with this and one is again this is not a name it and claim it approach we always wrap our prayers around to God I really want this but it's not my will but your will be done and that's how Jesus prayed remember Jesus was like please take this cup from me but if you won't uh, your will be done use it for your glory okay and so all of our desires of our heart all the things that we want we should always end with that Lord not my will but your will it keeps us in check spiritually and it honors God it shows a pleasing faith that not only do we believe that he is but that he's a rewarder and that he also knows best for us but we always want to wrap around to God's will and, and, and stay away from that uh, that sense of name it and claim it. That that it, it's almost like this this entitlement attitude that we have sometimes in the world. You know, we see these people they're protesting or they're, you know, um, who you know. I, so I see it all the time, and I think, man, that that comes from that entitlement attitude. And and if you come to God with that that approach of entitlement instead of you know what humbly it says walk humbly before your God. You know. Yes, we can approach boldly and, and, and in faith, knowing that He is good. It has nothing to do with us and our goodness. It has to do with Him and His goodness. That's where we're pro approaching boldly, that He is good, that He's a rewarder. But if we go in there and we're naming and claiming, I mean, I don't know what I would do if my kids came up to me and said, I, I want a candy bar, and so I'm just going to say it right now that candy bar belongs to me, you know, that's not the, that kid ain't getting a candy bar. That's not the, that's not the right attitude. That's not the right approach, but you know, um, so we got to keep the right attitude coming in with that pleasing faith saying, first of all, wanting to be a pleaser, wanting to please him, aiming to please. Secondly, remembering that he is, that he exists, not back and forth. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. No, knowing that he is, no matter what your flesh says, no matter what the enemy says, no matter what you see around you. And, and thirdly, knowing that he is good and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him.